All rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Alvarez. Here. Councilman Cullen. Here. Councilwoman Eckhart. Here. Councilwoman Hudak. Here. Yay. <laughs> Supervisor Hay. <laughs> Here. Notations of the exits in the front and the rear and electronic device, please put it on vibrate. Um, tonight, we're going to start with a public discussion on the Brewster Library bond referendum. Gina, would you like to introduce who's here to represent you and the rest of the board in your presentation? Sure. Look, yeah. you got two choices. If you want, you can lease my PowerPoint presenter. I'm now I'm only, I'm only kidding. Lisa. I'm going to second, by the way. <laughs> we open uh, the meeting. Either, she has to speak at the mic. Just speak at the either mic. you can, there's a mic there, turn, put it on on, and you can stand, or you can go over here by the podium. Your choice. Because the people at home won't be able to hear. Okay. Hello. I'm Gina Loprinzo. I'm the director of the Brewster Library. We're here tonight to um, present the project that we're proposing. Um, as hope most of you hopefully know, we're going to have a proposition on the ballot November 7th. So we're working with the architectural firm of Butler, Rowland, and Mays. And Paul Mays is here tonight to do a presentation for you and answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to turn it over to Paul now. You can use that mic, yes, just put it to the on position. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So very good. Thank you for coming out this evening, and thank you for allowing us to make a presentation regarding the referendum to the town board. Uh, many of you know the importance of libraries in communities. As a library <coughs> architect, it's one of my great joys to get to learn about specific communities as we design spaces for them that are appropriate in terms of the services that are provided and the architectural history of the community and so forth. And you know you have in the town of Southeast and in the village of Brewster uh, a number of things to, to, to uh, pay attention to as we look at what the options are. Within the downtown, we know from documentation that libraries can provide uh, a resurgence to downtown villages. In fact, uh, Middleburg in Scarry County, which is one of our libraries, uh, my alma mater RPI uses that library as a case study in their urban studies program. We're bringing in new business and becoming the catalyst for block grants and other improvements to the downtown business district. But we also know that it's a, a cultural stepping stone and an educational and literacy stepping stone for the community as a whole. And it's not just the history of that community, but in fact where it's going in the future as well. And so what do we have to work with in this particular case? I've been asked to do a very brief summation for this evening uh, because you have other items on your agenda, but we're happy to answer questions at the end. We've done a study of the existing library building circa 1930s, which has an architectural presence with the Palladian windows and some of the uh, context and detailing that is significant in the downtown village of Brewster. And in fact, it's part of the uh, historic district in terms of the makeup of the architecture and, and the context there. We also know that we have the town parking lot immediately next door and the space behind the library. The library had been added on to at one point in the future, uh, but in fact there's still a lawn area behind. So where can we go in terms of the services we're trying to provide and what would those services likely be? Just as a quick update for those who aren't as familiar with library services as people who are there every day, we obviously know about the collection. And that could be books, that could be media. And through the use of interlibrary loan, in fact, the book collection is not just what's present under the roof of that building, but is in fact the entire library system. So throughout the Mid-Hudson Library system, there are over two and a quarter million items that are available at this library. And so the idea of collection development has actually changed in libraries quite a bit, so that library directors are forced to look at specifics for what this community needs and have access to the other pieces 
through interlibrary loan. But we also know it's media, DVDs, books on tape or CD now, playaways and, and uh, periodicals and so forth, and even items like GPS and Kindle Nook. Many libraries are loaning completely different things now. There's a library in my district up in the north that actually loans prom gowns. And it's a small community where people are not very well off and many young ladies can't go to the prom, but the library actually every spring has prom gowns available that they have fitted and then returned. So the idea of what libraries do from metal detectors to um, uh, garden seeds and heirlooms that are harvested at the end of the season and brought back to the library has really changed. It's not just the very traditional collections. The other things libraries tend to be good at, aside from the collection itself, are the services and programs. So most people are familiar with traditional programs like story hour and reading and so forth. But there are many other in-house services throughout the library. The Wi-Fi and internet broadband access is a very important and crucial equalizer when it comes particularly to students. Um, it's a fallacy to think that everyone in the community has access to high-speed internet. That's simply not the case. And in fact, when classes or assignments are put out from the school districts and somebody doesn't have that advantage, they're actually at a, at a disadvantage in trying to complete these assignments, particularly in collaborative learning situations. I spent the afternoon at the library today for other reasons. The four public computers in the main room were in use the entire afternoon I was there. And downstairs, the computer in the children's room was also in use each time I went downstairs. Um, if everybody, if, you know, the, if the narrative had carried true and everybody has their own devices and doesn't need them, you wouldn't witness things like that. And in fact, we'll look at some of those statistics. The variety of programs are actually quite impressive. And as you can see, they, br they bracket a broad range of demographics from young to old. And literally, toddlers and babies in libraries and parent groups that go with them all the way up to seniors. Um, there have been Zumba classes that have scared me. I'm not quite sure what Zumba is exactly, but it, it can be intimidating. But there are all sorts of events that um, are not just educational, but actually uh, cultural and so forth, and, and um, about personal improvement. We know that the traditional idea of a library, this is uh, actually done from a charrette that I did a number of years ago, when people were asked to describe the library of their youth. The word cloud is created by looking at the things that people recognize the most in identifying the library of their youth and giving them the largest and broadest uh, text and font. So as you would expect, books, research, quiet, reading, these are the things people associate with the library of their youth. When they're asked to describe the library of the future or where libraries are going, this is the word cloud that came from that same group after they had been educated in what libraries are doing. So I'll ask you to notice a few things here. One is there are a lot more words, meaning that people expect libraries to do a lot more. The second thing I'll ask you to notice is that there are a lot of new words here, community, technology, um, entertainment, access. These are words that didn't even exist in that older version. So it's saying libraries should be doing more things, should be doing newer things, and yet the caveat is books, research, information, they're still there. So the third point is they still expect libraries to do those old things well. And the interesting thing from an architectural perspective is that we're trying to do all of these things in a building that was built to do those things almost 100 years ago. So these are some statistics. We can talk about apocryphal ideas of, of who's been where and when, but we saw more than a 10% increase just in the last year, from 44,000 and change to 49,000 visitors in one year. Wi-Fi access increased 119% from 2015 to 2016. And you can see that the programs and events, all of these are carefully calculated because Gina has to actually submit them as part of the annual report. Um, to the New York State uh, Division of Library Development and State Education Department, went from 4,866 to 7,486 individuals, and from 642 <coughs> programs to 804 programs. Again, substantial increases in all of these categories, pointing to the fact that the library is doing tremendous service to the community in a building that actually was designed nearly a century ago. The one space and the one area that the library can actually use to do some of these more innovative programs or create larger groups and sessions that involve collaborative work is this simple 15 by 20 foot space with some folding tables in it. It's also the storage area, it's heavily crowded, it's not appropriately lit, 
Um, and in fact, as somebody with allergies, it's not a great place to spend a lot of time either. It's in the basement, it's damp often, um, and it's not an ideal space. And in fact, we know it's always crowded. So most programs are packed. There's no place to do a lot of things in the libraries due to lack of space, not due to lack of interest, but lack of space in the building. There are programs that have to be held after hours or before hours. So actually up in the main reading room, the historic reading room of the library, where, uh, for example, an exercise or some of a class takes place or mahjong, uh, these things have to take place when the library is closed because there's simply no way to accommodate them when the library itself is open and the collection is being browsed. So just a small list, and these are a few examples of groups who couldn't be accommodated, who have specifically asked for space in the library to provide for their functions and couldn't be accommodated because of lack of space or because the spaces were simply overflowing. <coughs> Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, um, financial executive networking. We shouldn't forget that the local business, for example, can benefit greatly from libraries. One of the key things we do in many libraries are called a SOHO. It's an acronym for a small office, home office. So if you worked from home, you would be able, to, instead of holding a meeting at your kitchen table, to hold a meeting at the library, at a conference room table that's wired for distance learning, and you can talk to the home office in Peoria, or, or for college students taking online classes, or as a tutor room and study room and so forth. But theater groups, craft groups, homeschooling groups, uh, even legal things like depositions, uh, all of these things have had to be turned away at various points in the last year. Programs that have been requested, but simply have been impossible to schedule, including some really interesting science programs like Birds of Prey and the Planetarium, cultural programs like cooking and musicians and so forth. And then the programs, as we discussed, that can only be scheduled off hours simply because there's no room in the <coughs> library to do them when it's open. We know as, as architects and as library users as well that there are many issues related to accessibility. So I imagine, um, I ask you to imagine trying to reach to the top shelf of some of these, whether you're wheelchair bound or not, Accessibility also has to do with anyone who has difficulty lifting above their head, or in this case, you need a ladder to get to all the parts of that collection. It is, it is crammed into a very small space. We recognize that with the existing building, um, that the lawn behind it is still an important resource. It's used for many outdoor activities, and so any work that would be done on the building or in that location, uh, would one of the requirements would be that we maintain an outdoor lawn presence. Being outdoors in this part of the country is actually a very important part of uh, that cultural experience. The Memorial Plaza that's immediately adjacent to the library, uh, this is the plaza that's being created as a phase one project, which is being funded through a New York State Division of Library Development grant and matching funds by the library to redo the ramp, which is currently corroded and rusting, uh, and create an outdoor plaza area as well as underneath offices uh, and storage areas for the existing building. That's being done as phase one. The phase two, which is the referendum in November, is this proposed addition. The addition will involve the reworking, not just of the, the space that's being added on, but the existing space. It would involve a complete restoration of the historic reading room, which is the original 1931 part of the building, and in fact, open it up with open seating areas around the fireplaces, quiet tables, uh, media and technology and the circulation desk would be able to uh, supervise this space. We would create a new accessible entry at the existing vestibule as well as the plaza entry which is where the current ramp comes in. The location of the desk allows us to supervise all parts of the building and in fact now we have adequate staff area when we infill this small alleyway here. So we're reworking the existing, right now the end of the library is here and this part's the addition, but all of this is existing. It's being reworked. We see accessible restrooms, an elevator to connect the two floors. Anybody who's been in the building and gone from floor to floor knows that it's a tight, narrow, and winding staircase. So families with strollers, for example, or somebody who is mobility challenged has no choice but to leave the building and go out and down and around. The adult collection moves into this addition and spreads out. There are study tables at the windows and two quiet study tutor rooms. This allows tutoring to take place with windowed rooms that are supervised by staff. These are specific requests from the public as we've done various um, uh, public inter uh, interactions with focus groups and so forth. On the lower level, the existing door remains. This is the space under that <coughs> plaza, so it's the friends conference room 
moves out to this space. There's an office down here. And as we come in, we have a gallery and the children's collection. Right now, the children's collection is all in this space here. So you can see the children's collection has grown. Again, a direct response, not only to the circulation statistics, but the program requirements that the children's department has had. A young adult or teen space that is observable and supervised by the children's staff as well. And one of the most important pieces is a meeting room or multi-purpose room that seats 50. This allows programs in the library, and in fact, they are used typically all day long. They might be used in the morning with uh, uh, babies in library or parenting group, and then homeschoolers may use it at 10 a.m., and then homework assistance in the early afternoon, tutoring, and programs in the evening. It has built-in storage and a kitchenette around it, but it allows, the way it's designed, for the restrooms to be accessible even when the library itself is closed. So you could use the meeting room and those restrooms and groups like the list we showed earlier with the scouts and groups like that can actually use that space for meetings even without library staff present. The library's been designed so that the existing staffing levels would be maintained. In other words, they don't have to add any staff to run the library and we've carefully coordinated this with Gina and interviews with each of her departments to make sure that as we take the existing staff and place them in these various locations, the expansion of the building does not add to, in fact, uh, an expansion of needs for staffing. The efficiency of the addition is gonna be a lot higher than the existing building. Current budget levels have allowed them to run under budget when it comes to the ongoing operating costs and According to the preliminary calculations we've done, essentially that would be a wash, that the addition would bring us up to basically where the current funding levels are in terms of operation costs. The only caveat to that would be potential salary increases over time for staff. But based on the building uh, itself and based on the staffing levels, there are no increases in the operating costs for this. In terms of architectural context, again, we mentioned the historic building and the way it fits into the main street. The idea is that we would not in any way intrude on the original facade of the building, and in fact, it would maintain that full business district uh, along the main street. This is the plaza area with the offices below. This is the original addition, and then this is the new addition. So care was taken in terms of the lines and uh, the patterns of the building and massings of the building to fit with the existing. The overall costs for the project, which include both hard costs and soft costs. So we've looked at site work as well as building system repairs and renovations within the existing <coughs> building, as well as building envelope, all the, the roof and wall systems that keep the weather out, and the addition. Those costs total about $2.2 million. And then with contingencies, anyone who's worked on an existing building knows that we need to make sure we have money set aside when we open up walls or dig in the ground for unexpected things, as well as soft costs like hazardous materials remediation, uh, various design fees, the testing, and so forth, <coughs> and a clerk of the works to oversee the construction. The total is 2.938, which is the amount in the referendum. So what does this cost the taxpayer individually as we look at those numbers and spread them over a 25-year debt service, which the attorneys and the bond council have told us is, is the most appropriate for this particular project? If you have an average single-family home with an assessed value of $350,000, that turns out to be $24 per year or $2 per month, or for the pedantic 46 cents per week. That would be the cost to do the additions and renovations and upgrades that we just discussed very quickly, of course. These numbers are based on the town's 2017 budget, the current property assessments, and the estimated bond interest rates. Obviously, that will come out in the wash, but these are provided by professional counsel. This is uh, uh, determined by the bond council. So some of the improvements we might expect to see, and these are just samples from other areas, uh, other libraries like Saugerties that we've done, um, Moffett Library in Washingtonville, we're building Highland Library right now. Our circulation desks where staff efficiency and patron service, you call them constituents, the school calls them students, we call them patrons, they're all customers. It's a customer service uh, business that the library is in and providing information, technology access, and so forth. 
the restoration of historic finishes. This is actually Kinderhook <coughs> Memorial Library up in Columbia County, but the nature of the historic parts of the building are important that we maintain and actually provide good stewardship for the building as a part of the history of the town. The creation of quiet reading areas, spaces that people actually own. This is in Saugerties. This is a place where on Thursday morning you don't go there because the knitting ladies sit there and that's their space and they will kick you out of that space because that's theirs. We love that kind of thing. They, they actually feel that ownership. It's a safe place in a community. Or you have a lovely fireplace, for example, at the end and a Palladian window at the other end of the existing reading room, creating quiet reading areas and open spaces uh, that, that actually reflect the, that space and, and its importance. This is an idea of those small study rooms or the Soho idea that can be used by professionals and by students and tutors and so forth. The idea of finishes throughout the building that upgrade, right now there's plaster that has had leaks over time, all of these can be fixed and restored as part of the renovation project. And one of the key things is mobility. So in fact, having mobile stacks or areas where we can shift and change the program make those spaces much more flexible. This is a small children's area as an example, and those stacks can be moved around, allowing story hours and so forth to take place right in those spaces. And of course, we know that the local history is important on a town-wide and village-wide level. This is at uh, Warwick. Uh, and in fact, the donor wall is a local history wall with <coughs> images of historic buildings. So the fire department bought their tile, the hospital bought their tile, and so forth. So in a way, it's a storytelling about the community and about the history of that community. And so what will the expansion mean? Obviously, one of the key things that you've heard us talk about is the accommodation of larger groups and even all the groups that have asked, even if they're not large groups, simply the ability to do them. Since we don't have to do everything outdoors, weather is not gonna be the deciding factor in whether a program gets canceled. We know that we have accessibility compliance issues throughout the building, which would all be addressed in this project. Private rooms for tutoring and mobile office space were specifically requested by the community. We know up-to-date technology would be part of this project, not just broadband access, but improved and numbers of computer access stations, stacks that are actually accessible, a children's room and a, a robust <coughs> children's program, and then a renovated, energy-efficient and welcoming place for the entire community. Libraries really are that one democratic principle that we can all do something together we couldn't do individually. And it's not just the size of the collection, but the nature of the spaces that are created to allow us to do that. So I apologize as I raced through that. I know you have a long meeting, but uh, that's a quick run through of the referendum uh, that's being put before the voters on November 7th. Um, and I'm happy to answer any other questions. Gina's here to answer questions as well. Anyone on the board have any questions? I do. Go. Okay. Um, the um, $320,000 per year, which you said would remain the same um, for the, is that for the foreseeable future? Um, I'm just kind of looking, because I think it's really wonderful that you did the research and it was an excellent presentation on um, that there wouldn't need to be staff added because that's always a concern. So is there any kind of projection about how long that 320000 will be enough money to run the new library? I'm not sure, when you say 320, are you referring to this 350,000? No, right now the town gives. Oh, the town the operating. Oh, sorry. Okay, so, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware of which. Sorry. Yeah. Can we actually if you would just the pass the mic to yeah. Pat. Yeah. Gina, please. So we actually get money through the county as well, so right. our operating budget is actually more right. Right. than that amount. But, um, and my trustees can probably, you know, add to this, but. It's hard for me to say, you know, what year we would need to go um, for additional funding. Right. We've been at level funding since, I believe, 2011 when the 414 vote went into effect. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know how long a library would be expected to stay at level funding. No, I just wondered if there was some, pro I'm not holding you to it, just if yeah. there was some kind of projection. Do you have something to add? You know. I, I could add one, uh, I'm sorry. In, in my experience as a library architect as well, and, and a library board member and a library system board member, the single largest operating cost is the staff and Correct. staff benefits, a, a way above and beyond any of the, the, the fuel costs, the electricity costs, and so forth. Right. So having said that, one of the key issues was to design a building that would allow for its staffing with the, with the same levels as we discussed. 
So in that regard, it would remain relatively level. Now, obviously, if fuel <coughs> costs increase over time, that might change. And presumably, as staff either step increases or, or COLAs or cost of living adjustments. Right. But given that it's been level for six years, six, seven years now, um, and that the numbers that we're projecting within this don't call for that in the next several years because right. we would basically be using operating costs that are already budgeted as well as staffing levels that are already budgeted. It would be several years before anything like that. And happens. so that with the new building and the envelope and work that's being done, the, en the uh, um, energy costs would probably not go up up substantially is what that's correct they, they would they would go up within the levels of the budget that's already set aside obviously it's a larger building and as yes. efficient as it is it will still have some cost to it but as an example we're looking to improve the efficiency of the existing mechanical systems okay. uh, LED lights and occupancy sensors and so forth which would reduce electricity usage and so forth so yes it would be larger but it would still be within the budget that's okay. been established and oh, one more thing from Jim. <coughs> Right now, staff is at the library early in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right. even though we're not open until noon. We have programming that we um, have every Tuesday and Thursday morning, so that's why staff is there early. So they're actually getting paid, but the library isn't open. If we had the room to have those programs in a community space, not out in the library stacks or in the areas where the public is, we could open the library at right because you're there office. anyhow okay, so and we that, wouldn't need yes. to add staffing because as i said we're there right in the morning so anyway. it doesn't even increase hours while i've got you gina yes. please um on the wi-fi access or the what it was um 119 percent more um as far were computers added or library hours i mean there was a substantial increase the Wi-Fi access is actually people coming in with their own devices okay. and accessing our networks. Okay. So what we have is called an Arrowhive router, and it actually gives statistics through the Mid-Hudson Library system, and they give us a, a number. So it's actually very accurate, however many people are coming into the library and accessing the wireless networks. Um, we have more accurate figures since, I believe, 2015, since I got there, 2014 because we've installed these routers, we're able to see exactly how many people are accessing. So those are, those are very That was a huge jump. Yes. Huge. Yeah. Okay. We see a lot of people coming in with laptops, sitting at the tables, using their own devices. Um, the kids now have Chromebooks right. through the school. Right. So if they don't have Wi-Fi at home, they're coming to the library with their Chromebooks and using them there. So Wi-Fi access is a huge uh, service that right. we provide right now. And so the and the library hours um, would stay then, which you just discussed, would stay the same, only we you'd be able to open, um, be open to the public. That's the so, plan okay. at this point, yes. Okay. Um, just a quick, two quick questions, and I don't think, I think these are for the architect. Um, how mm -hmm. large is the, um, there's kind of a terrace, I think, is that what it's going to be with outside? <coughs> the the is plaza it? area the plaza, is taking yes. up the space, uh, it's right here. It's where yes. the existing ramp is, and there's a concrete and asphalt pad below it. So what is expected to go on? Uh, the, the piece I saw had tables and chairs. Right. We would have tables and chairs. And, so, and what, just roughly, what are the dimensions of that? Uh, Do you know what 15 by 30. Okay. Give or take, that would be 450 okay. square feet. That's okay. It's roughly. Okay. Uh, yes. And the one thing I find that we get requests I hear the most when I'm out talking to the public is that... Um, and I know they're going to be tutoring rooms, but smaller rooms for meetings. Will that, will it really, will that be offered more, or is it really just the 49 seats or the 50 seat? Auditorium? Well, as I mentioned, there are two small conference rooms here, the quiet study rooms that would seat four <coughs> to six people each, okay. and then downstairs the friends conference room would right. seat 12 to 15, okay. and then the meeting That's space the 50. 50. So there's a variety of spaces that could be chosen appropriate to what somebody needed to use it for. You wouldn't give six people a 50 seat meeting room no too. okay because it's kind of that in between where uh, the things i hear are meetings of 12 and and right. that's what so uh, this space which is going under that yes. plaza that we just discussed would actually see 12 to 15 people and then what's happening to the room that's used now for meetings um right it, it's, it's essentially that room, room moved to here <laughs> that, that room right now is basically in so there won't location. be an additional room it'll be that it'll be that room moved and better apportioned. It will have storage that's enclosed and locked uh, and be set up as a meeting room rather than a storage room with some tables in it. Okay, and one last question. 
Um, I think it's fantastic that you'll be able to access the auditorium or the small, the 50 seat um, area. Um, and you can close, the rest of the library will be locked so that people will, will won't leave correct. the staff there. It's set up so that the library proper can be closed okay. and only the meeting room and the restrooms would be accessible at that time. The, the elevator itself could be locked down. Okay. In other words, with the turn of a key so that that can't be used to access the upper level. And then the upper level will be closed off entirely. Right. The upper level is a little more difficult because there's only one means of access right. Right. at here and obviously back here it's not at grade. Right. And so uh, this emergency stair is included, which uh -huh. is required for fire yeah. safety. It's an emergency egress, so it's push bar, but it would be alarmed. Um, and that's the staff can override that alarm to go up and down the stairs themselves, but the public would typically uh, not, they wouldn't be able to use that after hours. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. House on the board. Public, if you mind, come up to the mic, please. Robert, pass around. Okay. Um, speaking of the Wi-Fi. Name, name for the record, please. Yep. Name yes. for the record. Oh, Donna Rallier. I don't think, is that on, sir? Yeah, that's on. Okay. It doesn't sound like You can speak over here. Um, speaking of the Wi-Fi, I don't, is there any provision in there to add more workspace, to add more computers? <laughs> yes, if you, if you look in, in this location, there are eight computer stations shown there, um, as well as downstairs in the children's room, there would be computer stations. So right now you have... There's four upstairs, two downstairs. Four upstairs. So adding four more in the adult room. So we would essentially be doubling the upstairs. Um, and what I meant to say earlier when you were talking about the Wi-Fi statistics <coughs> that differentiate from the computer usage statistics, right. they're relatively flat simply because they're used all the time. They can't be increased because those four computers are essentially in use whenever the library is open. The Wi-Fi is personal devices that come in, as, as Gina right. said. So. We also have um, eight laptops that oh, we have in the library. Yeah, you got it. <coughs> So not everybody actually realizes, but we do have eight laptops that we lend out for in-library use. So if somebody comes to the library and all the public computers are in use, they can ask to borrow a laptop to use in the library, and then they would be accessing the wireless networks. Um, what programs do you have planned for adults? I see a lot of things going on for kids and teenagers, which that's another question I have. How many teenagers actually come in the library? Because quite honestly, I don't remember seeing a teenager in there in years. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. But anyway, I, I, you know, I want to know. I see a lot of stuff for kids. What are the plans for adults for programs and maybe book signings or whatever? So um, one thing that we've had a request for recently was a genealogy program, so we'd look at those kinds of things. Um, we have a lot of fi financial seminars that we could have, things like that, elder care, what, things that we've had in the past, but um, we have defensive driving for adults every quarter. Um, are you talking about things that we haven't had in the past, or? I, I haven't recently seen okay. programs for like, adults. Really? I'm going to have to ask you to kind of stand yeah. so it's public in here. Yeah. These are questions everyone wants to have answered. I'm just wondering, so maybe someone can go to the podium. Go and, uh, okay. That'd be and great. Keep the mic in. We're always open to new ideas for programming, so anytime anybody <laughs> makes a suggestion, um, you know, we put it out there. We, we look for, for people to do it if we don't have the staff that can do it. Right now, we have knitting going on. Um, trying to think what other programs we have for adults on the calendar. I don't have it in front of me, but our, our calendar is online for anybody who wants to look at it. It's, it's pretty full <coughs> right now. Um, as for teens that come in, um, they come in after school, and as I said, they use the Chromebooks in the library. So you may not notice them, because a lot of times they're in the back room where, okay, the, the picture's not up. But if you go into the bottom floor and if you go like towards the back room where the biographies are in the teen collection, that's where a lot of the teens hang out <coughs> after school. Um, over the summer, we had a program called Battle of the Books. It was for sixth through ninth graders. 
and they're kind of teen tweens. Um, that's a group that we try to really bring into the library and it's a great program for that age because they get to um, participate in, to, in a friendly competition, but it's not sports oriented. It's more uh, for kids who are into reading and they get to uh, connect with people that have the same interests as themselves. So it's a really awesome program. Libraries throughout the Mid-Hudson system um, participate and there, there's about 24 libraries I think and they all get together and they do these battles, these trivia battles. They all read the same eight books over the summer. So that's a huge teen pro program we have. We've had painting parties for teens and adults. Um, the pictures from that are real great because I mean it's so crowded. People want to do those paintings. They're so huge right now. Um, homework help? Well, right now we have homework help put on, on hold until we're done. It was talked about that. Yeah. But homework help is for, for the younger kids. Um, what about, like, I know Patterson Library does movies for people. We've done movies. They, they do. We do um, movies for kids, teens, and adults, actually. So depending on the rating, you know, we do, like, the superhero movies for teens. Um, normally what we do is two staff members stay on a Friday night, and we do it when the <coughs> library is closed. Um, we've done them at the studio around the corner at night when we couldn't accommodate it in the library because it, if it's summertime, it doesn't get dark enough in the upstairs room that, that early or that late. Um, we've had adult movies in the afternoons that were not very well attended, but if we had a, a theater space like that or a program space like that, maybe you know more people would come to it. Well, that I will tell you, I, I don't even know about that, so maybe it just wasn't advertised enough. <laughs> We've been doing more with like, you know, Facebook advertising, um, emailing advertising, um, we're posting flyers in the post office now, trying to get the word out more, you know, even word of mouth that people, it's a problem with libraries that people don't realize the services that are provided. They don't realize what we are putting out there. So tell your friends. <laughs> well, in this plan, is there any um, thoughts on you know, like the adult room is getting moved, but is it going to get expanded and will there be more adult books? Yeah. Like more current books coming in and... Paul can show you where the existing collection stops now. Um, it's just a small area that if you see next to the... Can you... Okay. Currently the entire adult collection is in this space right here. The circulation desk is roughly there, but that entire adult collection is here. You can see that the adult collection space almost triples in size. Now having said that, the existing condition is such that it's crammed together with inadequate aisle widths and, and they're too high. So while this is three times the size in square footage, it's probably about one and a half times the size in terms of collection space because we have to <coughs> obviously provide adequate aisle widths and, and lower stack heights. But yes, the adult collection is something that was specifically addressed and in fact uh, couldn't shrink much just based on statistical information about communities. Your, your community is about 18,000 people. Uh, if you use the roughly, very rough for upstate New York, one square foot per person in your charter to serve area, this building is, is less than half, even after the additions, the size of that sort of rule of thumb. Now you don't design buildings by formula like that, but having said that, there aren't too many things that could shrink comfortably because the collection would be too small, for example. But it's an excellent question. The collection itself, the traditional collection, has not been forgotten. The technology and access <laughs> has not been forgotten. But one of the most important features is the flexibility to provide the other program that, that even you were asking about. And, and I suspect, based on experience as well, part of the advertising problem for it is that there simply isn't a good space for it now. You know, you know it's, it's trite to say if you build it, they will come. But having said that, um, when you actually have a space that can accommodate true programming <coughs> like that, or uh, right now the teens do all their work in this little <coughs> space here, which is probably why you, you don't see them very often when you're there, now they're sort of front and center and they're given a place of, of importance. So okay, thank you. Very welcome. Want to come up to the mic here, please, if you would? <coughs> or you can take the portal. Yeah, I'll stay Gabriel Montanaro. This is really low. Um, I found the presentation to be edifying, filled in some gaps for me, and compelling. Um, I am one of the lucky 26 of Southeast to be in this room tonight. 
Uh, so I'm wondering what your plan is for outreach for the community up to voting day to get a message across about what's going to happen if this uh, passes. We're having another public presentation at the library on October 19th in the morning, so um, Paul will be there. Um, it'll be a, a lengthier one because we have approximately a two hour window before the library opens. So I'm encouraging everybody. We to didn't come want to take that. two hours of your time tonight. <laughs> I would suggest also maybe going to the Village of Brewster trustee meeting, maybe so that they know what's going on. We can on. absolutely do that. Um, we're also trying to get it out there on social media as much as we can. Um, articles in the paper. There's a pamphlet back there. Thank you, Paul, for pointing that out. There's a pamphlet back there for anybody who um, you know wants some of this information in writing. And also on our website, if you go, there's a link now at the top of the page that says Library Expansion and Renovation Projects. So there's information on there. Um, so you can point people to that. And of course, my email and phone number are on there, so anybody can come to me with questions. Michael? <coughs> I'm Michael Kahn. I'm on the Brewster the Trustees Board. And I'd recommend those of you who are social media savvy to tweet or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it is you do, just get the word out as well, because that's how your friends who are in the area will hear. Um, and, and Brewster Library has a Twitter account too. Yes. So you'll be tweeting on that, right? And let's see, did you see what you said about the <coughs> newspaper covers that's happened already and what else might be covered? Um, yeah, yeah, there was a, there, there were a couple articles. Hamlet Hub <laughs> um, has been covering it, Village Matters um, newspaper, so, and, and there's been articles in the other local papers. So, um, can we put the October 19th meeting on the town website? Because I know um, I was speaking to some senior citizens and they were saying that are having these meetings at night, a lot of senior citizens don't feel comfortable driving at night. And that's exactly why we wanted to have one right. in, you know, during the day as well, so. Is there any chance? That one's in the morning. I Correct, 10.30, right. right. 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. So um, I was just wondering if we could put as an informational piece on the Southeast website. For what? That would be to great. say that October 19th at 10 o'clock, there's going for, to be- Forward us whatever yeah. you have and we'll okay. put it on the website. Yeah, because okay. that would be good. There were a lot of senior citizens who wanted to be at this meeting and really couldn't do it because now it's dark at night. Right, we will do. Idea. You're welcome. Yeah, so if you do, if you drop by the library, there's um, large drawings of what Paul has up here on the on the slideshow. There's you know two, three by four, two by three, two by three, two by three drawings, so you can really uh, take your time and look at them and um, ask any questions of me while you're there. Um, can I can I just ask when you had the groups? Uh, can you go back to that slide? There were groups that could not otherwise be accommodated, right there. Is, is that what you've actually experienced? Yes. Groups, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts saying, can we meet, or quilting, or craft groups, or are these, so all these groups people have said, have come to you and say, can we use the library? And it, At various and, times since I've been there, yeah. How long have you been there? I apologize for that. No. Um, almost three years. It's going on three years now. You have someone behind you with their hand up? Um, my name is Peter Carey. I'm the Vice President of the Board of Trustees. The Cultural Arts Coalition also has a space um, right across the, the parking lot from us. And we try and work with them a lot. When we have overflow, we send them back <coughs> there. And they've come to us, and we've had to turn them away sometimes. And we really feel bad having to do that, you know, because they are such a, a, a good partner with us to, to get word out and everything. And as a matter of fact, they have a YouTube channel that has a video Myself and uh, my fellow trustee, Margaret Bruin, are on it. Um, there's going, we're thinking of doing another one in the next few weeks with several of the members to try and answer any other questions you may have. Um, I believe it's the Cultural Arts Coalition of Southeast is how they're listed on YouTube. But if you just search Brewster Public Library on YouTube, you'll find uh, a couple of videos regarding what we do. Um, 
Advertising is tough because of our budgetary constraints. You know, putting out ads in newspapers cost a lot of money. Postage mailings cost a lot of money, so we, we might be doing phone chains. A lot of it's going to be social media and word of mouth. Um, we wish we could do more, but we just, you know, we can't. We just don't have the funds for it. We're trying to keep the project as cost effective as possible. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and like Gina's saying, let your friends know. You know, I, I've heard that. I've heard people actually tell me they didn't even realize we still had a library there. And that's sad in my book. That's really sad for everything we do, as you saw, and everything we'd like to do. For people who've lived here 15, 20 years to not know there's a library. Um, just tell your friends, tell your neighbors who live in town, and ask them to come out and vote on November 7th. We also, um, just talking about space and, and people who we've collaborated with, the, the museum next door as well. We've had programs there. They've had programs with <coughs> us. We're, we're running a book club um, around historical themes that Amy Campanero, the director of the museum, is running at the library. Um, we can't use that space in the wintertime because they don't have heat, so we're trying to find, you know, creative ways to keep these programs running all the time. So this is it. Thank you. To the front, please. <coughs> Hi, uh, John Lord. I wanted to know, um, have studies been done to see um, how, if, if, if this passes, which, is, which I'm hoping it will, um, how long this, configuration will be um, usable and, and you won't have to come again for another expansion. And then another thing, are uh, the plans as they exist now, um, is the um, footings and the architecture designed in a way that you can expand and add onto it um, so that other um, architectural plans or uh, engineering won't have to be looked at? Thanks. Uh, those are some excellent questions. Uh, the first question regarding the flexibility of the space and how can it be uh, accommodating for future changes in library design. I'm, I'm asked that question as a library speaker often. What is the future of libraries? The answer is obviously we don't have a crystal ball to see everything. And so the key when we design spaces is that they, that they be flexible enough that they can adjust as time goes on. So what you can see is that the structure in this large addition has a broad open space, meaning we can adjust and change things within that area without making structural changes to the space itself. Um, therefore, that flexibility is there. The, the original historic building wouldn't be changed because of uh, the stewardship issues, but even downstairs, <coughs> these are now larger open spaces. If you've been in the library lately, I, I apologize for not having existing drawings up there, but you can see it's actually a series of cramped small rooms that don't have much flexibility, which is why the stacks have grown to seven, nine, 12 feet, simply because there was no room to, to grow outward. Your second question about future expandability is an interesting one. We always design <coughs> these in such a way you can see the amount of glass along this wall uh, which is true upstairs as well, which allows us to expand out that way using the existing masonry openings and therefore not having to demolish a wall, but it can expand in that direction. The one caveat to that is that the concession that would have to be made to continue the expansion to the south would be giving up more lawn. So right now, based on the budget, based on the, the minimum programmatic requirements we are trying to accomplish to meet the service uh, goals here, this was a good compromise in expanding here and leaving this lawn. At some point in future, it may be the case that more additional space would be needed, uh, then, then that would be the area that would have to, to be sacrificed in order to accomplish it. Since that is the property, essentially, um, this is the property line, it's this long rectangle with one little, as, as you know, lot change that, that just occurred in the last month that allowed this plaza deck to, to be built. But ex excellent questions. Yes, it does allow for future expansion, should that become necessary. Given the collection area here and the number of program spaces, though, that's something uh, we, we try to anticipate in terms of collection size at least 20, 25 years in the future. You're welcome. Tony, could I ask a quick follow-up on that? Um, because with the village uh, plans going up, would this be structurally sound to build up in the back, or you would build out? 
It, uh, it, that's an, also an excellent question. It would be a better idea to build out, and I say that from a staffing perspective. Okay. Typically in library design, when you get up to 12 or 13,000 square feet, we say it's better to expand horizontally because of the implications for staffing on various levels. When you get beyond that, you may as well be another level up because it's so large. They're already at two levels, right. so we had that to deal with, but um, going up would be difficult for, for the, the staffing reason, but I would also argue one of the potential issues would be this original historic building, uh, the, the guidelines of the national parks and, and uh, state historic preservation offices are such that additions shouldn't dominate the historic building. So if we kept going up here, we would be creating this small little original building with this giant behemoth behind it. So I, I would exercise caution there. It's not impossible, but it's... Okay. And um, on the backyard, is the, are there any plans for... Um Ter uh, terrace or anything, or at this point it will just stay a as a backyard? Es essentially it has a charm as a lawn area that, that allows them to put up tents or do outdoor programming or put benches out as necessary. Um, that's certainly something we've done, amphitheater type areas in the back or story hours or, or secret gardens and so forth. Obviously we want to keep the budget at a maintainable level, so if we, if we address something like that it would be likely done as an alternate, meaning that the basic project is this, okay. we would get a price for it and see if, it can, if it's affordable or not. To create what you just said with the backyard. To do something beyond right. the lawn area. If right. it, that's not a bad idea, but in terms of affordability, the most important issues are the, the spaces that we've identified here. Right. So we might come up with an idea for it and then see if it's affordable. But, and you do have the seating area that will be outside up. That's right. Yeah. This right. seating area was chosen because it improves the entry to the library from that narrow bridge, but also because it's easily supervised by police patrols and so forth, as opposed to something in the back of the building, which could potentially be an attractive nuisance. Okay. And I have one last financial question, only because um, we, are, um, we face a very tough uh, budget this year and uh, breaking the tax cap. So my question is, what kind of fund balance, and I don't think you can answer this one, but somebody probably can, um, <coughs> after you have to, I know, match a large grant, um, so what kind of fund balance is left for the library? After the phase one project is done? You're yeah. What, how much is that phase? What kind of grant did you get and what kind of match? Uh, so you had to match it dollar for dollar? Right. We received $107,000. Okay. hundred and seventy grant. 170? 107. Got it. Okay. Um, do you want to speak to that, John? As our financial I think judging from the costs of the project, we would probably still have, because we were, when you get a grant from New York State, you have to prove that you actually have that money before they'll give you that money. Right. So we had the money to do the entire project, so that 107000 would potentially be back in the fund balance. In the right. So you, is it a ma you have to match this grant or not? I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. It, it's basically... Can I give the mic? Thank you. The state says, okay, we'll give you the $107,000, but we want to make sure you have $107,000. It's like... Right. It's six of one half dozen another. We have the money, but we're getting it from the state, and we proved it in that if they don't give us the money, we could still do the, the, the project. Right. So they'll give us the money, we do the project, but we still have that money in our reserves. Right, and is there, is there anything in addition to that 107,000 in reserves is my question. Uh, so essentially, what's in your reserves? Yeah, that, that, exactly. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have the financials right now in front of me. Um, no, that would pretty much be it, the 107, John? I'm not sure what the question is. The, the question is, what's, the what's, your, what's your current balance of reserves? <laughs> Regardless of the 107. Yeah. Well, take out the 107. What, yeah. what do you have in your reserves? Right. That's what we're asking. That's the question. Right. Yeah. We don't have the figure right now, but. If you can get back to us, I guess. Yeah, I think it's important just because we have to be so careful yeah. with our we, reserves. We, we are going to have to get back to you on that. Uh, John doesn't have the records with them. Um, we have the 107000 and a little more for, I guess you'd call it a rainy day fund in right. case. But we've been going through that the last couple of years just with maintenance of the buildings right now. Uh, with redoing plaster walls, we've had to redo the roof. We've had to put in a, a new heating system, what, four years ago? Uh, we had to put in a new heating right. system. So while we're not... Rich, we're not 
starving either. We, we, we have enough to, to get by. Okay. If you could email me or the town board would be great. That information would be really helpful for okay. us too. John, what are your John like? will take care of that. You mentioned earlier about sources of revenue. You mentioned the town, which we know is uh, 350? 320. 320. 320. And how much do you get from other sources? How much do you get from the county and any other source? I believe, and without having the exact figures in front of me, I believe the county funding we get is about 68,000. And then we get 9,000 and change from the schools. So our operating budget is somewhere close to 400. Okay, but how, 60 something from the county? 68,000. Do you know what the formula for distribution throughout the county is? I don't. I mean, they're having their meeting right now. Yes, okay, you know so how I much mean, you're getting you, this I, year? I don't know, do they go by square footage? I mean, when you do this, will you get more money because you have more square footage? Do you have any idea? I don't know that. Yeah. I'll try to find that answer out for you. I, I believe it's based on a formula uh, of charter to serve population yeah. size, probably. That, that makes sense. Yeah. When I was at the, on the read board, I think that was how it was done. But um, yeah, you might be getting more. You don't know yet, do you? Don't know. I don't. I don't believe we asked for an increase okay. this year. I know you got a big one a few years ago. Right. So. Okay. If I could add one more item, I apologize for lengthening this, but the grant that we're talking about that's yeah. paying for this phase one, right. this project will also be eligible for the same grant. Now we couldn't put it into the financials because you simply don't know. It's a competitive grant with all the libraries in the library <coughs> system, but it's very likely we would be applying again. It's an annual grant, so next August we would be applying again to try and offset some of these costs. We can't <laughs> responsibly say we expect to get right. 50, 100, 150,000, but uh, the library will be continuing and will be continuing to assist them to find other sources uh, to fund things like that. There's also, obviously, we want to be reaching out for uh, member items and, and, and other opportunities uh, for the entire community and representatives to pitch in. Great, thank you. Does the current building and the proposed building have surveillance cameras recording as well? Inside, not Inside. outside. The current building. Yeah. Yes. The current and the future one, the expansion will have it as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. The, the IT. We have four right now, um, and I don't know that we've really talked about how many we would have in the new one, but. We haven't gotten to that level of detail, but it's standard operating procedure to have both perimeter exterior as, as well as interior cameras in various areas. And right now, from what I just heard, you don't have exterior now? I'm sorry? Did I just hear now you don't have exterior or only Not interior? exterior, I don't no. think we should talk about security. Well, I'm publicly. just asking the question. I know, but the public doesn't need to know. Sure they do. Why? Well, no. I know if they're stealing the book, they're going to get caught. But now they know they're not going to get caught. No, they're not. They got an book, book loss isn't the I've biggest used problem. The security <laughs> cameras. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'll make sure it's in the budget. Okay. No, go ahead. Well, that was it. I was just saying I have used those security cameras for okay. security purposes. Right. So. So. One last <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions for you. Kathy Croft, uh, the parking, increase in parking spaces, I saw on one of your previous slides there looked like there was an increase. No, we're, we're not touching the parking lot at all. So how many spaces, it's, it's the town's, the town's lot. Mm -hmm. lot, so how many spaces does the library get the use of, like are dedicated the, to The lot? town owns that lot, so I'll have to... Well, after this is done, because we're going to have 67 main with the arts upstairs and the theater group, you know, there's going to be much more room. We're going to have to figure out how many you need. Um, we have, what's that other place called? The, 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 no, the, um, the, the hospital. Museum. Hospital, the hospital Petty uses spaces. Eagle museum Eagle uses Eagle spaces. Eagle so we're going to have to determine how many spaces we're going to have to be, and what the number of handicapped spaces that have to be required as well. We're, gonna, we're actually we're doing that right now at 67 the main we're right. kind of doing a study we have to put an elevator in that portion to get upstairs and we're working on reconfiguring that lot possibly so i have a question that'll be in the future you. is there a possibility of that there's like a green area that kind of juts out into the lot where if that was kind of i think there's a lamp post there. well sometimes there's a requirement when you have parking like that that they have to have that type of space one there's a lantern there a lamp post right and you'd only gain one spot for it, and sometimes it's there for reasons that, unbeknownst to me, but when they design parking throughout the town and all the shopping centers, they require these little jogs, space. like so many per. So we'll look into it. And then there's a dumpster there, isn't there? Is that the library's dumpster? No, it's the town's. Town's? Well, isn't there, the, isn't the right there a dumpster? On the right-hand side, there's a dumpster. Okay. 
Do you, there's there's nothing on the left hand side? Nothing no. on the left. Hey, we moved okay. it. It used to be. Okay. Shows how often I go there. <laughs> um, another question. Um, you were speaking about allergies. Can you mitigate the mold smell spell in the summertime? I have no idea if that's possible. It's an excellent question. <laughs> As an allergy sufferer, yes. Um, and, and probably the reason I went into this very <coughs> is into musty libraries. Uh, the, the improvements to the mechanical system would include air conditioning that allows dehumidification throughout the year. Um, so a more sophisticated system with better controls that reduces the amount of moisture in the air, as well as the building envelope improvements that I discussed in the overall budget are about keeping water outside of the building itself. Right now there are currently a few locations where either uh, roof drain leaks or uh, uh, infiltration through the masonry exterior have created interior damp spaces. So those will be addressed to remove the source of water and then uh, uh, a, a better mechanical system that addresses the issue of humidity control will, will take care of that, yes. One other question, and it's concerning your budget. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how your library, I know it's not, it's a private library. I'm not sure. Anyways, I was Public. wondering, it, is your budget available? Do you post it online? We usually, we sent it to the town. Okay. And do you usually, because you're usually really good about posting everything online as I far as budgets. I don't know we post their, I mean, they should actually post yeah. their budget online, but we can post it online. I'll look tomorrow, and if it's not there, we'll put it there. Great. Good. Thank you. Just to clarify, we're a public municipal library. So what that means. Anyone else to make comment or ask questions? Seeing none, I'd like to thank you for the presentation coming this evening, and good luck. Thank you very much. Pardon? No, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a work session for discussion on the 2018 town budget. Oh, you know, you gotta wait. We're going to be delayed for about a minute. No problem. Yeah, no, sorry. <coughs> yeah, for, for about, we're going to take a recess for about. One, two minutes. Okay. Make a motion to come out of the recess. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could you can? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, at our last meeting, I presented the uh, 2018 budget to the town board. And tonight I'm going to expand the, actually it wasn't in the presentation then, but I'm going to go into a presentation this evening, identify how and why I'm at where we are. And then the town board, of course, will be reviewing that budget that may be prepared this evening to go into some detail and we'll go from there. Okay, 2018 budget presentation. As I stated just last week, this is my sixth budget submission, which began in 2013. Even though the tax cap is no more than an artificial ceiling placed on municipalities by the state, the state can't cap expenses passed on to municipalities by others. I don't believe anyone wants to raise taxes. I know I sure don't. But when circumstances beyond our control take place, it may have to become a reality. Let me explain why and how we got here where we, this budget will take us not only in 2018, but the future further into the future, and that is something that all budgets are considered. My first chart is between 2008 and 2012, the previous administration produced budgets that relied on using surplus to balance the budget. Not only do I believe the use of surplus was reckless, but the budgets were produced using overestimated revenues and underestimated expenses. Now, during the previous administration town budgets in four years, 2008 to 2012, Town taxes raised by, oops, that's the next one. Okay, let me, why am I, why am I on this one? 
This one here, the previous supervisor, which was John Dunford, left uh -huh. the incumbent coming in at the time, Michael Wright's, $1.7 million. At the end of Mr. Wright's term in 2011, he had $98,000 left in the surplus. It was reduced by $1.6 million. And like I just said, taxes during that same period of time were raised by 24.54%, an average of 6.9% a year. And that's a considerable amount of money. Now, when I came in, I came in with the 98,000, and currently the surplus is at 1,682,492. Nope, that's not right. Hold on. It's 1.9. Million dollars. 1.9. 1.9, and <coughs> we're sitting at 1,890,000 dollars. That's the difference between what it was when I, what it came in since I've been here, so basically. Okay. Now, during that period of time, like I said, the 27.54 percent increase is right in. Where the hell is this thing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Was 27.54 percent. An increase, like I said, of 7% a year. Now, thus far, we're into like five years, and our town budget, this current town board, has raised taxes by 6.41% during the first five years, which is 0.13% over the five years. If we do what I've suggested we do, that will now be 11.83% in six years, and that would mean it would be a 2% increase over the past six years on average. Now, um, as I stated previously, the increase is due to circumstances beyond our control. And what that is, is the health insurance, which is the first item that we're gonna look at here. Now, with the health insurance, previous supervisor was in, well, it's nothing that he did or I do, it's the, dealt, the hand that we're dealt from the cost of health insurance. Now, during his four years, um, it went from, during the four years that the previous supervisor was in office, health insurance rose $95,000, or 10.26 over the four years. Now. What has happened in four years after that, which is why we all have been sitting here, it rose by $129,000, 17.35% over four years. However, last year it went up 10%, no, not 10%, 1%, and this year it's another 11%. So in the past six years, health insurance here will have risen $301,000, which is 25.99% which is a substantial increase. Now, the next item that brought this budget up is the 2007 garbage contract. It jumped by $397,806, or 26.41%, above the previous contract. The garbage contract is a perpetual expense, not a one-time expense, Raising taxes will provide the town with a sound budget foundation as we have experienced over the past five years. Tinkering with revenues and expenses and using surplus will only bring us back to a darker past. Let me reminisce for a moment and go back to 2001 when I was a Putnam County legislator. That was the first year that the county executive began a five-year campaign of producing zero budgets. However, by 2008, the county executive called for a 40% increase in taxes. Not one person remembered five years of zeros, only an unconscionable proposed 40% increase in taxes. Now let me briefly go back to the garbage contract. Not only is it a perpetual in its base, it also has a built-in escalator clause that needs to be addressed. By the end of the contract, the town will need another $369,495 over the next five years, 2019 to 2023, to fill the gap. That's why we have to address it with a permanent solution and not a waste, waste of money kicking the can down the road with a temporary solution. <coughs> Another consideration the town should be addressing now, and I have this in this budget, is that we need to prepare the town for the eventual loss 
of approximately $250,000 in revenue when a town's parking contract with the MTA expires in 2020. We'll need every penny of surplus and more to fill that future hole. Due to the sound management and prudent financial oversight of the town board over the past five years, the town board's bond rating, as determined by Moody's, has risen from AA3 to AA2. This change has come about because the town has built up an acceptable surplus in accordance with the New York State Controller's Office and has brought revenues and expenditures back to an acceptable level, which will reduce the cost to, of any future town borrowings, which brings us to the library referendum on November's ballot. If the library referendum is approved by the voters, that bond rating will help keep the interest rates incurred by the town and its residents that much lower. In closing, let me add one other caveat to the 2018 budget. The fact that the library referendum is on the November's ballot and the budget will not be approved until after the election, it would be recommended, it would be my recommendation that if the library referendum is approved by the voters, that prior to the passage of the 2018 budget, that the tax consequences of that referendum be included in the 2018 budget approved by the town. This would require only one tax cap override and not a second override next year. Once again, if the taxpayers approve the library bond referendum, the tax increase will be due to the circumstances beyond the town board's control, not too dissimilar from the garbage contract. If the town breaks the cap, as I have recommended, this will be the year to do it, as there will be no additional penalty to, our penalty to our residents for exceeding the cap. After all, no one knows what next year's cap will bring. Thank you for your opportunity to further explain my budget and discussion. Based on those figures right there, Tony, then, what does that mean? What, what are we talking about if we have to raise taxes, not including yeah, if, not if the library, library, right, exactly. It would, it would raise taxes. Uh, hold on, let me get my chart. Wasn't it eight dollars? Well, it's eight dollars yeah. per family per year. But that's on a three hundred and fifteen thousand. That, that's only again. Yeah. My suggestion again, if the referendum does flat, so let's not entertain that at this point in time. We have to wait for the election. Well, you would add. They said it would be twenty-four dollars per year, so you would add eight to that, so it'd be thirty-two dollars per year. Yes. Well, that's based on a three hundred fifty thousand dollars house. Right yes. assessment. Yeah, right. So, and these well, are all. Uh, everyone's going to pay something different. So. Right, right. And the, and the eight dollars was actually based on three hundred and fifteen, or was it three? I think it was three fifty four. Was the okay. number we got? So it's work. close enough. So yes. okay, but that would be the average. People will pay more or less, obviously. I had one. If um, with just ours, the increase would be eleven point eight three percent, which comes out to two percent a year over the past six years. And that's for the library. No, without no, the library. Just with, just I, I don't want to confuse the two, but I just want us to consider if in the future, if it passes the referendum passes, we address it in this year's budget and not again next year, which will definitely break the cap tax cap next year if it's not broken this year. Well, I've reviewed the budget. I understand Tony's concerns regarding expense pressures. I looked at it. Looked at the budget, gave it a hard look. And guess what? When you look at a lot of the lines, there's fat. And there has been fat. And that fat has contributed to the fact that we have surpluses, as Tony has said. But when you look at the actual spending on many of the lines for 16, well, let's say 15, 16, and part of 17, because we're almost done with 17, there is no doubt that you can eliminate in the budget what has already been budgeted because it never happened in 15, 16, and 17. So there are zeros. What happens then is we still budget for the extra amount of money, which means why are we doing that? Because we're at a period of time right now where we should not, and we don't have to bust the tax cap. Now, I don't know anything about what's going to happen with the library, whether or not it's going to happen, but right now we don't need to do it. As far as I'm concerned, when I look at this budget, what we've done is we've, we've reduced what I believe are the revenues and increased what I believe are expenses. I'm going to be asking our town accountant to do something for me. What I'm going to ask him to do is to take where historically we've always had zeros and there's still been more in the budget, which of course have increased your reserves. It has increased our surplus to what I thought initially was 
1.5 million, which Tony reported tonight, is 1.9 million. That's what he said tonight. So we have those reserves. Now, of course, what are reserves for? Reserves are for the rainy day. Well, you know something? I don't think we're going to need the reserves for the rainy day because I think that in looking over this budget, I bet that we can cut down what's in this budget. Because, for instance, for the highways, there's money in there for roads, to improve roads. We didn't use that money this year. So if we budget that same amount of money next year, what's going to happen is, in effect, what we budgeted this year that we didn't use this year adds to the reserves. So if we budget it again, because we're now going to say, well, let's do our roads, we already have the budgeted money. And you know something? If there is something terrible that occurs, well, guess what? Maybe the money that we have budgeted for the roads next June, we won't use all of it. But in effect, what we've done in the past and what this town board has done, it has indeed built up those reserves. There's no two ways about it. 1.9 million in reserves. But I know that I can look at this budget and I've already done it with a lot of tabs. And I'm going to outline it more specifically where I bet that even just looking at that budget and cutting that fat down, that we're going to be able to not bust the tax cap with using the reserves. And another thing. As far as building up more contingencies, more reserves, this is a time now where we have to say, enough. We're not going to continue that. You, you know what it's analogous to, where you, have, where you have companies that say, let's store up. When you don't take a sick day, you don't take a vacation, let's store it up. And then, oh my god, at the end of the day, that person can literally take off three months because of accumulated so much sick time and so much vacation time. And I, my recollection is on the, that the town board, we eliminated that. We told people, you take it or you lose it. Essentially, that's what we're doing here. We keep on building up the reserves. Now, Tony talks about the fact that there's going to maybe be a loss of parking revenue in 2020. Okay, so that's 2020. Maybe we will. You know, to me, I think the contract is up. Willis could speak to that a little bit better. But you know something? We have enough in this budget where we can cut what we have and we can add what we have in terms of the reserves if indeed it comes to that. I don't even know how much money that we would lose as, as parking and I don't even know how much we can negotiate with the MTA who's saying that we're not going to have that money. But right now I know we do not have to bust the tax cap for 2018. As far as what the library is going to do if the referendum passes, let's see what's going to happen. My understanding is we probably, when's, when do we have to, well, when do we absolutely have to pass this budget by? You had sent that around. 20th of November. Pardon me? 20th of November. 20th of November. So let's see what happens. But I think it is absolutely unnecessary to do this. I would vote against it. And I'm going to present all of what I believe is the fact plus. Another thing that I'd like to do, I'd like to have something that makes it a little more understandable. What I think is, I'm going to also ask Ron Hund. Now, in the past, you know, it was great. We didn't bust the tax cap. We kept on building up those reserves. But here's what I think is necessary. And I'm going to ask a P&L statement summarizing all of the revenues and department summary spending for 16, 17, and proposed 18. Because when you look at this budget, it, it's a little daunting. We have lots and lots and lots of departments. But there's nothing that really summarizes it. So that you can look at a snapshot and say, oh, look, that's, that's exactly what was, oh, look, that's exactly what came out. There were your revenues for the department, and there's your spending. So I'm going to ask Ron Hund to do that, too. So Ron Hund, I'm going to say, where we have historically never, never used that budgeted money. It's been zero and zero. Make that budget line zero. That's what I'm going to ask him to do. I'm going to say that. And where historically it's always been less. So we budget a certain amount of money. And in each year, it might not be zero, but it isn't anywhere near that amount. Well, then maybe what we'll do is we'll budget less. Because when you really look at the budget, it's sort of like it's almost an overlay of what we've done in the past. So we have zeros, but we still are budgeting certain amounts. We're budgeting oil for departments that really don't use the oil for heat. And that's great. There's no problem. Maybe one day they'll have it. It's an anticipatory, uh, it's an anticipa anticipatory action. But now is the time for us not to do the anticipatory actions. Because we don't want you, or at least I don't want you, to be able to pay taxes for something that you've already paid taxes for so that it can go into the surplus. The surplus is $1.9 million. 
If we pass this budget, that surplus is going to increase more this year. I guarantee it. Over the $2 million mark. All right? When Tony says we can't kick, it, kick the can down the road, we can't kick the reserve can down the road. We can't keep on augmenting it because it's your tax dollars that are doing it. That's what's happening. So for the roads, we budget a certain amount. We didn't use it for the roads. We budget it again. You pay taxes on a reserve. We should have used that money this year for those roads. That's what we should have done. We shouldn't have sat there and said, oh, let's not do it. It'll add to the reserve, but we'll budget it next year. And oh, by the way, maybe next year we're actually going to do the roads. That's not what it's about. So I'm going to present to the board, Tony and the board, a more cogent explanation for all my little tabs. And then at that point, I hope that we're going to consider the fact that I do not believe, nor do I want, nor do I think the taxpayer wants to bust that tax cap. I don't care if it's $8 extra. The point is you don't do it. We're responsible for your tax dollars. You don't increase those taxes because when you say $8 one year, it's going to be another eight the next year, maybe 25, maybe on 350,000. Hey, guess what? What, what is 20, what's $30 a month and annual? Come on, guys, let's do it. And then you know what you have? You have more and more and more. Our responsibility is to not increase taxes. It's to maintain that tax cap. It's not to have you pay more money. I'm knocking on doors. You know what people say? Thank you. Thank you for maintaining that. That's what I intend to do. Thanks. Okay, I will just speak briefly. I definitely respectfully disagree. Um, I buy some of your argument and let me explain why you have in your budget what I have. I have a lot of experience now with municipal budgets. If we cut back like your suggestion, like we didn't use this money this year, whether, and we cut it, you're not going to put it back. Because if you don't, if you're going to be, if you cut, whatever you cut back in uh, expenditures or add as revenues, I know there's fat in that budget. And look where we are. But look where you guys were previously to me coming here. You spent, not you, but you know, the town board spent between 2009 and 2012, 27.54%. Well, well above any 2% cap. Huge, okay? And you use $1.6 million in reserves. I think what I've done is phenomenal. And I want to stay there. Because I'm telling you now, if we do this, I can tell you, I can go through that budget right now and give you every penny that you want. But what about the future? If we take away revenues projection, if a town doesn't use money, you know what they do in the old days, by the way, and they'll probably do it here if, if you take away from their budget? Next year, well, if they won't do it next year because there won't be any money there, but they'll spend it. There's no reward to not spend it. So if you have a budget and you say they got $400,000, and oh, I gotta spend every penny because next year I won't get what I got the year before. But now with the tax cap, what we, your, your suggestion is almost virtually impossible. I think what we have done in the past six years is really something to be proud of. Can I make this? But I'm telling you right now. And another problem you have too when you're talking mm -hmm. to Ron, you gotta ask him. Because the um, garbage is a district, you can't use the monies the way you're proposing. So double check with him about the fact that the garbage is a special district. You cannot use the monies that you project. I would not want to cut or add anything to my budget because the surplus, if we cut it, we cut, let's say we, we find the 500,000. I, I can find 500,000. We won't have any more future surplus. And as we draw down on the surplus, we're going to be right back to where we were in 2012. And that's my prediction. I respectfully disagree. We have a $1.9 million surplus. What are we doing? Well, what is a surplus for? And you know something? We're not saying we're going to use all of the surplus. What we're saying is we're not going to continue to build it up in a year where we're asking people now to accept the fact that we're going to bust the cap. No, I disagree. If you can find 500, because I'll tell you right now, I'm finding that money. Yeah. And when I find that money, you still have the $1.9 million. You do. Nothing's changing. I'm not saying you have to use that. But what are we going to use it for? What calamitous event are we going to use it for? Maybe the parking? Well, let's find out. How much are we really going to lose? Really? I mean, the bottom line is, yeah, sure, 
We'll sit with Ron Hunt and I'll ask him about that. And I'll ask him whether that garbage is something that can be, you know, it's sacrosanct in its own, in its own district. But the fact of the matter is, we can't continue to use taxpayers' monies to augment a surplus when we have an alternative. That's the point. I get it. Because <coughs> we have this enormous surplus. We came back from when it was initially, what did you say there, Tony? How much when you came on board? Because when we were all You guys pretty, had run it down to 94? Well, it wasn't us guys. Well, you were us guys, us guys weren't here. No. Well, us guys weren't here when, when, when Michael Wrights was using the money. No, but okay? the bottom line is it, it, it regard, from 9 to 12, the previous administration, again, Taxes rose and surplus was wiped out. There was no money left. This is good budgeting. One point nine million dollars is not a lot of money. One, the county, the controller's office recommends approximately ten percent. Correct. And okay. we have an eighteen million dollar budget. Okay. So, so it's ten percent. So it's one point eight million dollars, and we've Correct. got one point nine. Correct. So we have a hundred thousand more than the recommended from the controller. And that's not a lot of money. Well, apparently the controller thinks it's a lot of money based on the fact, or thinks that it's right on the money. And when a controller says it, it's because the controller doesn't want to have taxes placed on people to augment the surplus in such a manner that it isn't fiscally responsible. 10% of our budget is 1.8 million. We've hit it plus 100,000. That's what I'm saying. So if we only use, let's say we use 100,000, whatever we're allowed to use per se, you still have a problem with, we've, we've met it, and then we're still going to be over the tax cap. And you're, if you start cutting lines, I'm going to tell you right now, I can see it now exactly what's going to happen. You're going to cut lines, you're going to increase revenues, and that's the big downfall. I tried to explain what happened when I was at the county with the county executive at the time. He underestimated uh, revenues or overestimated revenues. I don't do that. I have an ultra-conservative budget, and I'm telling you, I'd rather have my budget than the one I inherited. Well, I would, I would rather have your budget too, except that for the 18, I'd rather have your... 17, your 16, your 15, when it wasn't extra taxes paid for the people because we kept it within the tax cap. Now that you're saying we're going to bust the tax cap, that's when we have to look at this. That's when we have to start doing the right thing. Well, the $500,000 that's necessary to do that, which is the garbage contract, $400,000. I thought it was 300. 400, 397. Okay. And now, I would not, I'm telling you, if we did not have the problem with the garbage, the $400,000, I'm rounding it out, I would not be going into the tax cap. We'd still, in the surplus at a point in time, no, we wouldn't be using anymore. And I've used surplus during this period of time. And every year I do use a surplus. I what? think I figured out over the past five years that we've, I've been doing it, that we use about $900,000, $894,000. Out of the surplus? Yeah. And when and we still get that much. When when we still when we have the financial reports and you say everything's fine, we're within except for legal. Yep. Then at that point you Based are on our using, budget. But you No, every no, when I just prepared this budget. Okay. This year I chose to use none of the reserves because I would have to use more than necessary. The, the tax cap is one point eight four percent. Okay? Mm -hmm. So once I use that one point eight four percent, which I'll round out to say two hundred thousand dollars. I need almost eight hundred thousand dollars to bet onto the budget, so, so we are going to end up breaking the cap. I'm not going to break. So the we cap. use the reserves in seventeen and sixteen. Every year, I use reserves to help offset the budget. Okay, yes. so and reserves in excess of eight hundred thousand. So when we have one point nine million this year, you use eight hundred thousand last year. So no, 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 oh, no. Okay. Since it's past six years. Oh, the past six years. Yes. Okay. I use I use reserve every year. Now. At some point in time, now the highway budget is completely different than this town budget, okay? Yeah. That's my reserve. The highway has its own reserve, okay? But that's your reserve. We, well, no, it's the highway reserve. We don't touch that money. My, my reserve right. is the town's reserve. Correct. The highway reserve is the highway reserve. Correct. Now, I'm going to tell you now, if you take away any money from the highway department, one, we need to buy a truck or whatever. You know, we've been very responsible. We don't have to, you know, we're just buying trucks. We're, we're doing all the things. Every computer is in this town all done with money without breaking the tax cap. One town's broken the tax cap every year. Which, which and, and I'm very proud of the fact we haven't done it, and that's why I want to continue to do it. Well, For instance, I have here, so this is, I just don't know, supervisor personal services, Seven, 16 actual 117-162, adopted budget 2017-116-946, estimated is 83, but the 200, uh, the 2018 requested is 121,632. 
So that's an increase of? No. Oh, I don't know. What is it? No. Oh, what is it? I don't know. Can I look quickly? Oh, go right ahead. 117. We adopted last year 116, mm -hmm. and it's 121. This is what we spent to date. Yeah, no, I know, but that's 83, and we spent that to date. What I'm saying is the budget amount is 121, 632. Yes. And then we have to look at each individual one. What did I increase? Well, it does well. Well, 250. It doesn't matter, it's still increase. 6,050. There's $200, $200 there. This one here adopted 2,800. I mean, like 2,000. Oh, no, no, no. This isn't a. This, you know what? This, I don't know. Where did you get this? I got it from you. Well, something's not right here. This, this didn't. This says the judicial. What page, page number are you on, so I can walk? It please. says page three. Three. I see Justice Telephone. Yes, I, I don't know. I don't know why the justice telephone is there. Okay. 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 Well, this is stuff anyway, that we can work on. You you can bring it into Rye. That's what I'm gonna do. He and I sat down for, you know, at least a week, prepared the budget like we have every year for the past mm -hmm. six six years. Well, but there's a lot of repetition, so I agree, because there's a lot of repetition in it. And I again I've always underestimated revenues because I've seen it happen. I saw it happen here. I was sitting out in the audience the, the whole year before I actually ran for the office. They came in the revenues for uh, the building department was down by 125,000, 100,000 dollars shortfall in revenues for recreation. I that will never well I won't say it never happened with me. I tried to be again ultra conservative, but we haven't done that. Do we always make our projections? Yes, we do, because people overestimate. In order to balance the budget, they raise revenues, and you can look at the history. So. You guys do whatever. Yep. I'll counter with a question. I mean, could I find that money? Sure. But I'm a, if we reduce a line, there's no way to replace the money. I don't know why that is, but well, because, because you've increased lines. So in this budget, there are some lines that are increased. So you are doing, it you're getting. On, it depends on what the item is. Correct. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. When you look at the budget, it does depend. And that's why you have to look at each line. In the past, did we scrutinize each and every line? Not as much because you were under the tax cap. Unfortunately, if, you know, I'm hearing now that part, you know, part of those reserves are used. When the reserves are used, that's great. I mean, at this point in time, what I'm saying is, now that you're saying you're proposing to bust the tax cap and we have those other amounts of money, we tighten our belt. We tighten our belt so we don't have to hit the tax cap. This is the challenge this year. We just can't use what we had in the past and just take, oh, well, here's 17. I can point out many, many lines in here that seem to be just a carbon copy of what was last year and the year before when it doesn't have to be. But maybe that was acceptable then, but it's not acceptable now when that's it precisely what you're saying. We're gonna bust the tax cap. And that's okay because we might have to bust it next year too, but there's, you know, let's do it just once because then it was, doesn't affect SAR. I mean, no, we don't have to. Okay. We don't have to. Okay. I'm going to look between 2008, 2012. I saw what happened here. We have the exact reverse. And again, once you start tinkering, like going up and down, whatever, I go across the board just like that. If they didn't use the money, I keep that money there because nothing changed. I mean, sometimes you don't have to buy things. You, you know, computer expenses or whatever. Things change. And if it gets reduced and we reduce it, how do I bring it back next year without breaking the tax cap next year? No, because first of all, Tony, you got to look at which lines I'm talking about. You can, you know, I'm looking at oil. You know, in one case there was oil for a department. I don't know where they use oil. How do they use oil? I'm looking at another department, and they have something that hasn't been used. I'm looking at other other salary expenses. You know, I'm looking at this and saying you haven't done it, but now we're budgeting it once again. In the past, when you didn't break the tax cap. Maybe it's acceptable because you have bro you brought up your reserves, and now I'm, what I'm hearing is you really had a lot more in the reserves if you took out 800000 over the past six years. So we've done pretty darn good in building up those reserves. But once again, reserves are there for a reason. So we have to think about that. And I'm not saying that the reserves, once again, we're well within the 10%. We are. So now you're saying, well, let's make it temporary. We've got to make it more. And it's OK to overstate the expenses and understate the revenues because you don't want to run into a position. Well, let's look at what forecasts are then. 
Let's say to Ron Hunt, our accountant, what's the forecast? What do you think? Let's ask Mike Bruin in the, in the highway department. Let's ask Justice Court and say, what do you see as the trends? And then we can be more intelligent about it. But right now, just to say, hey, you know, this is it, we're busting the tax cap, I can't accept that on behalf of the taxpayers when we have more than a 10% surplus, which is what the, uh, pardon me, surplus reserve, which is what the controller says. I can't see why, how, that, how that is fiscally responsible. That's, I just can't see it. And I know and realize we have that extra money for the garbage people. Yeah, sure. And uh, also health, health uh, insurance expenses. So what I'm saying is, in light of that, we can still cut here. We still can. And if Tony has used reserves in the past, over the past six years, then this is another time where it would be acceptable to use the reserves. I'll look into that more. Because if you're saying we actually use reserves in the past in our budget to augment or whatever it was, then let's look at what you used in the past, see what that amount is, because we might not have to use much more than 50 to 100,000 of the reserves, which apparently is what you did in the past that you just said. Didn't you say you use reserves? Yes. Okay. But if you but cut. <coughs> what? No. I don't believe he's used a lot of reserves considering. But he's used the reserves. He said he used reserves. Yes, every but, year. So, so every year. So we're saying we're not going to use reserves this year when we really have a necessity to do it because we're going to break the tax cap. And I'm saying on top of it, you can make this a leaner budget. So if you don't have to use the reserves, and if you do, it's going to be a small amount, which apparently in the past you have used a small amount of the reserves to augment the budget. That's all I'm saying. Again, <clears throat> once you cut, how do you replace that money? You can't do it, especially with the tax cut. I, I, I disagree. No? Okay. I think you can. Well, I think you can by still looking at the other by still looking at the other lines. It's a dynamic process. It's not something that we better always put this sixty this six hundred dollars here because who knows? Maybe one day they'll use extra staples or need a, a computer repair when they haven't done it in the first place. Okay. That's when you start cutting. Well, my big confusion is I sat out there between, again, between 2008 and 2012 to use ev almost every penny of reserves, increase taxes by 27.4% in the past six years. It was like not even half of that, and we built up a surplus. Correct. I'd rather have me running the books than someone else. I didn't say you, I, I'm not saying you're not going to run the books. Well, I'm saying really who should run the books are the people of the town of Southeast who make the tax payments. That's what I'm saying. And we can still be a team on this board. The thing is, we can't just say, too bad, throw our hands up, and this is what's happening. And now that I hear you used the reserves in the past, let's see how much you used in that specific year, and maybe that's all we need to use as from the reserves in this specific year after we make this, this budget a little leaner. That's what I'm saying. You gotta look at it harder is what I'm saying. You can look I, at it harder. Go. Okay, Go uh, just a couple of uh, things. First of all, okay. um, disappointed that we didn't know anything about this crisis until last week. You know, you do your supervisor's report every month. I told you at the last meeting, the reason it's not, it's a special district. Right, but when, that, we pa when we passed the budget at the time, we were, we were just made aware of that. It was too late, the public hearing had been held, I'm, and it doesn't show up. A special district does not show up on our reports. Right, None but, of them. But if we we're numerous, paying, but we're, we were paying a bigger bill than what we collected, I could understand last, you know, January, February, March, maybe we wouldn't have known, but come October of this year, the crisis should have been identified. We should have been told. I mean, we were the basically told. The crisis only pertained to this new budget. And I understand that. But all, every month, you give us the supervisor's report, and you say everything's fine, no problem, no, make I a don't. joke about it with Lynn, except for the only issue, like Liz just said, that you had ever identified was the outside legal counsel line as being something that was too high. This is a special district. Special but it's districts still, do but not it's the entire, every residence in the town pays the special district. On, the, on this particular one, yes, but not the right. other. But that's why it doesn't we, show up. But we didn't know about it, okay, and that's so well, you all should of have sudden, known about it. Did you not vote for the garbage contract? I, it was I, the lowest, it was the lowest bid. It was so the lowest bid. We got the lowest bid and we, and we got better knew, service. We all knew, we all knew at that time that right. it went up $397,000. Who right. knew that? So why are you saying you didn't know? Well, but you're the budget officer, and you were giving us reports and said that there was never an issue until the there, week before you issue. released the budget when you called me up. I recognized the issue at that time. But, but we should have been told before last week. That's all, or two weeks ago. You were ago. told a year ago when you voted unanimously we were, no. on the garbage contract, we knew it was $397,000 more than the previous right. one, and the second highest bidder 
highest bidder or lowest bidder, whatever, was five hundred thousand dollars more. I think what Bob is saying, you, you didn't elucidate on yeah. the issue involved with the budget. Perhaps it could have been something that we could have then started really looking at it. The fact that that it increased wasn't necessarily something that you you called a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was, and said, hey, we're going to have to bust the tax cap right. because of that garbage contract. What Bob, I think, is saying, and you can say probably better than me, is it would have been nice if we had just known, you know, six months ago, exactly. hey, listen, we're, we're, we're going for a hurt on this one. Right. And that that's way we what could I'm have saying. looked at other things, other savings to maybe offset the, the, that's what the we contract of what the garbage. That's what we do when we did the budget. But I've also been um, speaking to some of the department heads, calling them up. Surprisingly, some of them didn't, most of them didn't even know there was any sort of issue this year with any sort of budget crisis, which was surprising. How would they know? Because my budget. But I, don't you, well, right. I so every, what, I so interview what? and sit down with every department head in this town, and we sit down and we go over their budget. They don't see the overall budget for the town, they see their budget. Right. So they wouldn't know. Right. But what I'm saying is, I did speak to them and I asked some of the department heads, and didn't get through them all yet, what we can do to save money in their budgets. I already identified a couple of lines. Um, one of them being the garbage flyer. Um, it's cost us about $5,000 to mail it out. I know it's small potatoes, but it's not really necessary to mail oh it out. Oh my God, I, I... People screw up the garbage all the time. It comes, in, it comes in December, right around Christmas time with Christmas cards and everything else. Nobody ever knows where it is. I know we put more it people online. that have their refrigerator and they got pictures of well, the kids. I don't know. I see stuff on Facebook all the time. The garbage didn't come. They didn't realize it was a holiday. People don't read it. We put it online. They can refer to it online. We can have some copies at the One Main Street at 1360. People can come and pick it up if they have a problem. Okay, um, you, you say be so, five thousand right, dollars. Right, that's okay, but, but that's the point. But this the is the point. So if this up. was a quick phone. I was able to save five thousand dollars quickly. I spoke to the recreation department today. I know it was your baby, um, the recreation flyer that we started mailing out after we stopped mailing it out. That's also around six or seven thousand dollars, I believe, in total. Speaking to the recreation uh, leader, she said that since we started mailing it out, compared to before we did the flyer, there's been no increase at all in any people participating in recreation. Um, it's nice to do it, but it's something that we maybe you know we can avoid. Yeah, doing. we cut services. Right. So I mean, I think that's what we're going to have to look at. We just have to look at every but every line. And see where we can save. If we can save five thousand here, five thousand there, it's going to help. Okay, when you're uh -huh. saving, just make sure you get over five hundred thousand dollars to stay with five hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars to stay within tax. Right. And then the other thing, which I know was your pet peeve, and I don't know what happened to it. I mean, every time I drive by here, at different hours, uh, the court clerks are here late at night. I thought the overtime was supposed to be curtailed with them. It's, it doesn't seem to be. Um, some town, one town employee here was on a, a holiday working double time. Um, one day that I was I no, drove, that's not true. Well, she should have been gotten no, overtime. She, no. If she made her own deal. That's yeah. actually a problem. Yeah. But that's that's the type of things that we need to curtail. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, there are things that have to get done. In I understand that. There's no stuff. Like they get it. I'm telling you, with the overtime, with everyone except for them, and I talked to Will. Unfortunately, we don't have too much control of them. We're supposed to have it on the budget. I'm going to tell you right now, with your permission, I will send out a memo to the courts tomorrow that beginning immediately, the only days they can have overtime is on Tuesday and Thursday day of court, because I've never gotten support. You know that's been a problem. We never so, discussed that. So I'm going to you do it. An, an, an I'm you, send you, up, you can't, you can't do tomorrow. something like that now. Sure you the can. Courts, the courts give us revenue, so I'm not going to start a big battle with the courts mm -hmm. because we're having a workshop or work session discussion on the budget. It makes sense for us to sit and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And if Bob is questioning the fact that there are people overtime, et cetera, and what happened with it, let's look before we suddenly write letters and start jumping. Well, because you well, know what's gonna I, happen, I would, that, think, that's just, right. when you jump, you make bad decisions. That's so a decision I think. wanted to make for the past long time, because when I got here, the courts had a hundred, seven, seven employees, they have uh, six now if you count, whatever. They had $100,000 in overtime every year before I got here. And who was sitting here with that? Not me. A hundred thousand overtime. My first year, I got it down to thirty thousand dollars. Of course, it's climbed back to fifty. They play whatever, but it's fifty thousand. And courts making revenue. I hear it 
to how hard they work all the time, how much revenue we bring in, but the bottom line, the courts lose this town about $125,000 a year. So, no, and I'm saying that's something that needs to look at. If it, the overtime is necessary, things need to be done. Fine. I don't think it's necessary. Um, Partially. Right. I mean, I know other communities, you get a speeding ticket. Bedford, Greenberg will be two years before you have a trial. I don't We could that push one, things that out. That one further. we can all agree upon. Right. Okay. So, that's, so there we go. There's something else that maybe we could say. But yeah, it's but still early in the process. You need, you Liz is going to be doing research. I'm speaking to department heads with the budget. And we, well, just to see what we can do to save putting their money. foot in their own mouth. They're going to have a real, not with me, but they're going to have a real problem. Because if you start cutting back when they need this money and they're not going to have it, I say, hey, talk to the 2017 town board because they cut it. Okay. Tony. Um, no, you can't talk. <laughs> ah, go ahead. Um, I, you know, we're, we're elected and paid to lead this town, and, and I think you've done a fantastic job on the budgets. And if we're really serious about cuts, um, I think we can. I, I think we're going to need to have budget workshops right. at least every Thursday till we get this straight, so that that people really understand what's going on. People that are interested, um, I can I can see cutting if this town board is willing to give, and um, and it sounds like they are. But if we finally uh, cut insurance for part time employees, meaning elected officials, that will save the town right off the bat about. $80,000. So that will be one of my proposals. I've really gone over this budget. Um, I would like to do a deep dive into an energy audit. Um, that might not help us this year, but I'm really happy to, to look into it because it seems like electric bills are really high, um, and I think we can do better on that. And I think that's something that employees aren't going to have to take a hit on. Um, so I would like to do that. I don't know how this town board feels, but I did um, do some research. I found that uh, the town of Carmel, uh, they, their part-time elected officials do receive health benefits. Uh, Kent does not, they get none. Patterson, none. Putnam Valley only judges. Phillipstown does. So um, in, the, in Putnam <coughs> County, three of the towns afford benefits for part-time elected officials, and I'm not suggesting that full-time elected officials lose their benefits. But I, I really feel strongly about this, um, looking at the hours we put in. I think this is a, um, I think if we have to give, we should start at that level. That, that's one way we can belt tighten. Um, I'm a little confused about highway because we certainly can't dictate to highway what if they do roads or if they don't do roads. So I'm a little confused by that proposal. That is up to our elected highway superintendent. Um, and I also I'd like it look to look into phones as well. So I, I think that phone bills. Phone bill? Yeah. So yeah. Lynn, you, you're but you're in favor of busting the cap. Just out of curiosity, you think that's necessary? I don't know whether it's necessary yet, but certainly if we're going to nickel and dime, I I do agree with Tony. If if it is necessary, so we don't kick the can down the road, so we're not doing anything artificial for one year that's going to do us no good in the long run then yes, I'm for breaking the tax. So down. you are. Okay. No, I said if. No, I know, I heard you okay. say if. If we, can, if we can make some serious cuts, I would consider it. But if they'd have to be very serious cuts, and okay. I, I don't know how willing this town board is to make those cuts. I mean, unfortunately, Liz and I did have to make some very serious cuts mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and it was very difficult to do. Um, you know, but we, we have to look at other things. So I was getting to the energy. Hopefully, at one point, I don't know what the status is with the, um, the solar panels on the landfill. They're getting the, closer. They're getting closer. Yeah. I mean, that would be a, a huge savings with their electric bill. If, I mean, it's delays beyond the town's control. But um, hopefully, that will. The would, polls are out on the way. It's around 50. Yeah. We, we estimated 50,000. Right, here. and that helps. And I do agree. You know, I think we do use a lot of electricity. I mean, I drive by here at night, all the lights are on. And, inside here which i don't really understand no, why the, the judges, judges the I judge know, have requested that bank of lights at right. the end one two three remain on all night and that's all that remains here the one in the lobby remains on i mean maybe we could get them on a sensor or something that if somebody walks in they'll go on um you know i mean because it is and we use leds right i mean right i mean we and tony i know you've been doing a great job you've been trying to save us a lot of money you've been looking into things um but we, we just have to really see i mean maybe some of the little construction projects we got going on around town hall in the past we had some work done 
different things. Maybe that in the future we can put off that stuff uh, if necessary. <laughs> they put off this roof here for well, not the actually roof, they not well, the no, no, but that's no, when you say construction. I don't know what you. I mean, we could Mickey Mouse little well, things. Right, we painted the front door or yeah, sealing the windows. I mean, that, right. what are we um, doing? that's major. No, no, there's nothing major, but. You know, we just have to. You got maintenance. You got to have right. maintenance. No, general maintenance has to be done, obviously. Um, but all right, we we just have to start looking at everything and see. I mean, if worse comes to worse, and there's no, you know, possible way to not do the. I know thing. exactly where you're going to go with this. I know exactly where it's going to end up. But I'll tell you, I can look out into the future and see it. I've watched it and witnessed it. I saw it happen in Putnam County. I saw it happen. I didn't see it happen here, but I can see by the history of this town, where how the money surplus disappeared, the taxes went up like crazy, and tell me where the money went. What am I doing so wrong that everyone no. else did so right and we were in such bad shape? I don't get it. Nobody said that anything is being done wrong. And for instance, about the highway win, it was budgeted and it wasn't used. If you're budgeting the same amount again, why are we doing that? Because it only increases the reserve. I'm not saying anything about where highway has to use it. What I'm saying is it was budgeted and it wasn't used. That's what I'm saying. So why wasn't it used? And if it's not used, why are we budgeting it again? Because if I reduce it, I can't replace it in the future. Right. And when it comes to the highway, they have their own budget, their own reserve. We need anywhere between, I'm going to use a yeah. number from 12 to $18 million if we were to begin repaving all the roads, not counting, replacing catch basins and culverts and everything else. That's a lot of money. But why haven't we done it in the past then? You budgeted they, it. And this isn't the highway budget, I don't think. I think we budgeted a certain amount of money and we didn't use it. That's what I'm saying. When it's, let's, the highway budget is the highway budget. I so let's, let's talk about it. But this is our, our budget, exactly what I'm okay, talking so about. Which one? I mean, I got a $25 in a line that's never been used. And also, you know, I, I need a little, we need, the town needs like a, a, I'll call it a slush fund. No one likes to use that word, but it's a slush fund. A cushion. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's what it is. But that, it, it's a cushion. <coughs> I think we're in such great financial shape, and the only way to look into the future is to do something. I won't say it's drastic. I think it's reasonable. And I tell you right now, if we do what I'm saying now, six years from now, providing there's nothing crazy happening, we are going to be in excellent shape. We do we're in we, excellent shape now. That's um, the point. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I mean, that's not what we said last year, that we're not in excellent shape. We're in excellent shape now. Identify it, say we're in excellent shape, and what you're saying is, well, you never know what the future's going to bring. I got it. But we have that taken care of for now. I mean, I just don't know why we're doing that. I know that this is going to be the slippery slope. We're going down that slippery slope where I hear that it's okay to bust tax caps. To me, that means it's going to continue. That's no. what I hear. No. Because we have to be concerned about the future. The future is now. We have to be concerned about the taxpayers now, not in the future. Well, As a special district, the only way you can replenish those funds is through what we're proposing. There's very, we use some of the reserves this year to balance. It's a special district. We can't use certain money. So again, I know you're going to check with Ron. Absolutely. Let him advise you why we can't do things that is going to be proposed. The only way to replenish this gap is $400,000. And by the way, I think you heard me when I was talking before, we're gonna to have to come up with another $365,000 in a potential 3% increases between now and 2023. And that's a lot of money as well. My budget includes that. So your budget includes that shortfall? No, it includes that. If we raise the taxes now, Okay. Uh -huh. We will have the money in the future to pay these bills back to 2023. So, I'm not thinking about tomorrow. So, I'm thinking down the road. So we're going to raise the taxes, which last meeting you said would be nothing more than maybe eight dollars annually. Exactly or something what like it that. would be. Based now, on how that. is that such a, law, a large raise? That's the incongruity of the whole situation. You're saying it's this much and it's a big figure. But then it's only eight dollars. I don't know. Is it a big figure? It's a small figure. What is it? Well, hey, a dollar. And I had over here. I had five hundred thousand. I don't know. All Which of a sudden, part? it's what was it on this? It's seven, it's seven, total is around seven and change. Total. <coughs> okay, so I guess based yeah. on this, we're gonna have a meeting next Thursday. I would like to. I would like to really hash this out in front of the public. I'd like to get um, feedback. Maybe at the end of the evening, people is everyone will have some. Prepare for that next Thursday. Is that fine with everyone? We'll do it here. I would like to actually, and maybe we could do a daytime meeting. Um, you know, I know other communities do. I'd like to hear from the department heads why right. they, right. you know, why they can't survive with 
out whatever money. What you know, I'd like to hear from them how they can identify savings in their department. Um, and you don't think I did that? I no, we're not saying but we're, that. We're and I'm telling process. you right now, they don't like coming in front of me because you know what they get? Yeah, <laughs> zip. Well, look, what what you're saying is what you're saying is the department has what you said before was guess what. If you do that, then you're going to have to, I'm going to say to the department heads, go talk to the 2017 town board. Well, I'm going to go to the department heads ahead of time and say, I don't want you coming yelling at me. Tell me what you think in light of what it is. And of course the department head's going to want as much money as possible. But the issue is, can you live with anything less? That's what the issue is. And then let's talk to them about it. I mean, like I said, when I looked at this budget, a lot of it was exactly what, it was almost like a carbon copy of last year's budget. It was sort of like, here it is, here it is, here it is. What I'm saying is maybe that's not appropriate in a time period where you're saying that you want to do this. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I admit, it's a carbon copy, carbon copy, carbon copy, because that's prudent financial planning, which I think I've done. Well, now I, but, I'm here and that's not prudent. So, so well, look, it, you want a daytime meeting? Well, I, I, I would think we should, I like. I don't know what's more convenient for the department heads. Well, the department heads be better during the day. Right. Um, Can all the town board could, members I make mean, a daytime meeting? No, Edwin it's usually been a problem. No, well, yeah, I mean, Edwin? maybe. Well, you got to check my schedule. I have to, I I have to see. Depending on the time, sure. Right. I mean, but I think at this point, you know, what I'd like to say is, days. let's just see. Hold on. Mm -hmm. well, I know we don't have many days. I mean, I, I'm actually, I am calling department heads and speaking to them. I'm slowly making my way down the, the list. Um, you know, and as far as recreation, um, they say that the, they put everything out. They have a Facebook page, Southeast Recreation. That's right. where everyone, the parents nowadays and stuff, that's where they get their information from. Um, you know, and that's free. So, you know, I think that, you know, that's something that we could. Uh, I have no problem I, cutting right. that. I know, and that, I, I know it's, all, it's I not mean, a do you big guys, Are you guys going to, are we going to seriously address health care? Sure, health absolutely. Care? We're okay. going to seriously address everything, Lynn. Okay. I sound like Lynn in the old days when she used to stand up there and attack the budgets. Looks like we're changing places here. No, I, I, is, I am. I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't. You know, if we, you can nickel and dime this, and that's fine. We serve the public, and we want the least. We Correct. want the best budget Correct. that's going to work. Correct. So, is, does every when does everyone want to meet? Let's well, yeah. okay, figure I'm gonna it out. Say the nineteenth because we're going to need to do. Which we're is meeting the nineteenth already. That is correct. And then after we can we... do that. Then we can do the twenty-sixth thereafter. Mm -hmm. We can do the... the, the I mean, early week. afternoon would be best for me. Um, so if we could meet like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, have the department heads here. Oh, you're going to spend overtime. You're going to be spending my money. Uh, I'm not available on the 19th. What? I'm that's, out of time that was on a the 19th. That's a scheduled meeting. That's, that's a scheduled meeting. That. So that's already scheduled yeah. no matter what. That's, we um, have public hearings that night, I think. The, um, well, t the town employees work to what? 5 o'clock? 4.30? 5. 5. five. So no, wait, we, 4, 4, 30, 4, 30. 4 30. So if we, you but know, I, I the department out. heads, the department heads get overtime. No. Okay. Yes, so the yes, they, yes, they get comp time. Well, comp oh, look at I look at what's comp time. Well, they get in, in lieu of money, they take a half hour off or yeah. half a Which day off, depending on what the hour is. I think it, you know. I don't know. Look at so what day are we doing it? Well, I wouldn't mind the 19th. We could, right. I mean, if we're going to meet so here nine, anyway. Nine, so we're going to schedule okay, Edwin can't for a full meeting I'm, for the town. I'm away on business. Okay, that's, so that's, we, we'd have four members here. I thought here, we, we had discussed the 26th. The, we did for the public hearing. We're we not need, ready for a public hearing. We're going to need more time than one meeting and whatever. So we are but we don't, the budget time. doesn't have to be passed until no, I think it's later in the November, year. Exactly. Not we, by November 20th, the budget has to be approved. Right, so we have we have time. Um, so we could maybe put it off to that day, or maybe start with some department. The more it's put off, the longer. That's crazy. Okay. You are no, we're not thinking about us not have, knowing that. If, if, I had, let's okay. this, oh, if I hadn't I'm discussed any, that, if I hadn't discussed anything tonight, and I think we should tonight. have a video recorded here early. That way, people. I mean, right. even though it costs money, but that way it's transparent. I, I, I think. I think really, the at the end of the say. day, if I hadn't said what I said tonight, everyone would have been very satisfied. No workshops. It would have been the 19th. It would have been whatever was the next date done. So now all of a sudden it's becoming a big thing because I'm making a point of this. I don't think it's any bigger than we can still stick to the same schedule. You want to have department heads come in? Why don't we make October 19th a little bit earlier? That's fine with me. But if I hadn't said anything, nobody would be having workshops. At least that's what I think. Because I've well, raised this as an well, issue. 
I think the workshops really make sense if we're really serious about I mean, if you can do this all on your own, that's great. But I'm not saying that, but I'm saying you wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had any workshops had it not been for me saying it. We would have had the next regular town board meeting. We have one more no, meeting. No, and then we talked about whether or not we would have the next the public hearing on the twenty sixth because there was talk of having it after um, I think on November second, which we couldn't make, and then right. November 9th. And right. you, and I Bob, don't know why. Yeah, we need one public hearing, right? Yes, one public hearing. And so we should do what day is the 20th? Uh, that's a Monday, and there's and nothing that says we can't meet on Monday. November. Monday, we've done that in the Tuesday. past, but uh, you right. know, when you've got a controversial budget, we should really try to stay well. within the parameters so it can We got to November 20th, okay? So no, October 19th. Teen. We're going to meet at five o'clock. Got it. And you want to? You, well, you're invite. Will you invite all the department heads to the meeting? Well, I, I think we should have an organized. Yeah, to, you know, right. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. I'd like all the department heads here well, to go through. You know, the town assessor, who's normally here all the time, anyway. And we need. What's Ron your department? What do you need? Ron Hunt will be here. Right. It, make, it makes Ron sense. Ron Hunt needs to be. I mean, we did this in the past. Um, I can't wait to hear my department heads. Yeah. They're going to love you guys because you're going to give them what I won't give them. <laughs> no, I'm not, we'll, um, all I want to I want to hear from them, and I think the public them. needs to hear why they need to get by with what they have and how they can't identify any savings in their department. In the context of what you're talking about, you keep in mind that you have to have the public hearing on the preliminary budget by okay. the 9th of November. That's the latest. That's on Tony's correct. budget. The no, on the no. preliminary budget. Yeah. Your, the, your the town board's yeah. budget. Your right. budget. His is the tentative budget. Got so it. November, so November. No, it's okay. No, November 9th is, is that the latest you 9th. can have the public hearing. Public hearing, okay. And it has to be publicly noticed. In, in it. So we think we're going to get with, with so we got October, one meeting, we'll get everything done. October 19th is our next one that Correct. we're saying now. Yep. And then what's the one after that? Is next it Thursday? October. Oh, well, then there's the 26th or the second or the ninth. No, what, no. What was originally scheduled? 19th. Or what 19th. We were originally scheduled. Okay. We can't Correct. meet and then earlier. We're always then? scheduled for the 19th. You yeah. guys, we, we can't meet like that Monday then instead, so that I can be here. Like I said, I'm away on business. We, 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 well, we could meet the 19th then, if you're. I'm away. The 12th. I'm away the 18th, the 19th, what about the 20th. 20th? So that's a Thursday. Yeah, the 12th, which is next Thursday, I can meet then. And then we could leave the 19th for um, more discussion if needed, or, um, I mean, that makes sense to me. Is then Edwin can be here on the 12th if it's department heads, whatever, and then we so can October, meet on we're the saying 19th. October 12th is and the 19th. More sense. October yeah. 12th. Keep in mind that you also on the 19th have three public yes, hearings. Yes, exactly. And uh, yeah. Barrett Hill is one of them. And yeah, and Barrett Hill is going to take some time. So I really. So I would prefer to get this done. I would. I prefer not to put this off. October 12th. 5 p.m. All department heads will be requested to be here, and the town again. Um, so what, we're not doing October 19th at 5 p.m. then. No, we would. That would no, be a that's regular a meeting. No, that's a regular meeting. We we'll well, just do a regular. Said that. So unless we, unless we need to after right. the October 12th, if we need more time with them, and then whatever we do it on the. So that's the right. seventh. And we have the. So the 19th months. is going to be a tough day because of all the numerous public hearings. Yeah. So. Okay, yes. October, okay, we'll do that in a moment. So October 12th, 5 p.m., yes? That's fine with me. Everyone? What day, October, October 12th, 12th. It's a Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah, that's fine. Next week. Then Edwin can be there. October 12th, and we'll go after October 12th, we'll decide when, and the next one is the 26th automatically, but that's No, the 19th. 19. <coughs> that's, but that's we'll scheduled. know if we need to then schedule, we'll know early, we'll know the 12th even if we're gonna need more time. We should really have a much better idea if we have to schedule next. But of course it doesn't prevent any of us calling department heads on our own and doing our own research. Of course so. not. I mean, right. you know, I've been right. through this and I've, that's why I identified energy costs. And, right. and I, agree, I, mean, I agree with that. Energy costs, that, I mean, we wanted the solar panels. It's just right. a shame this has been dragging on forever. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, air conditioning on on the weekends and stuff. I came to come in here once in a while on a weekend and load the air conditioning. Well, did you want to cool? What? Do you want to call? No, I appreciate it, but I'm just saying, it, nobody's it, it, here. It is supposed to be on a timer. Right, yeah. but. But I don't know if it's on the weekend, whatever. Okay, October 12th. Okay, um, make a motion to go into the regular meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> okay, number one, Justice Court Assistance Program, JCAP Grant Authorization. 
Now, therefore, be resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to make and file any and all applications to the New York State Office of the Court Administration for the purpose of accessing grant funds to be used in connection with obtaining equipment to improve safety and security and to modernize administration and record keeping at the Town of Southeast Justice Court facility located at 1360 Route 22 and be further resolved that any and all actions hereto in this regard be Justice Court personnel or town official in the regard in order to meet the filing deadlines are hereby ratified and confirmed. Hey, Liz. Non pro time. Non -pro -time. <laughs> you got it. Move for discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Second resolution requiring a town seal emblem be affixed to all town vehicles. I thought we did this one. We did, but uh, we have a problem with a vehicle. I was going to say they were sending it though. Okay. okay. Resolve that the town shall permanently affix a town seal emblem. No magnetic signs on all town owned motor vehicles prior to being placed into service and be further resolved that the town seal shall be no less than 12 inches in diameter. Now shall any town emblem be less than 24 inches in length, six inches in height. See attached photos to this resolution and be further resolved that any town vehicle that currently does not meet the criteria of this resolution shall have no more than 10 business days from the passage of this resolution to comply and that such vehicle shall not be used for any purpose until said vehicle complies and be further resolved that resolution number 68 of 2017 is hereby rescinded. We put, we put uh, a size on it. I forgot to attach. The, yeah, I was gonna say, where's the? I, I, no, I forgot to attach when I sent out the resolution right. at the time and I didn't identify by size. So now I have pictures to go along with it, which are not here, but. And the I'm size is spelled. But a lot of our vehicles, um, have like the script writing on the doors. They do. the, right, yeah, but it's not a town seal, so we have to. I, it, emblem. Town seal emblem. It's an emblem. I'll show you. I'll, I'll forward you. Right, I thought that to me. That's a town seal. Right. And there's the emblem is what you're talking. The script. Town of Southeast Building Department or whatever it is. Is it's that 12 script. inches though? I don't yes, think I measured it. They were told. <laughs> At the minimum, it could be bigger, but right. that's the minimum. So move for discussion. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number three, resolution appointment count appointment council. I got I think I worded it wrong. Appointment of council to defend Article 70 proceedings, Sant versus Town of Southeast. Now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast hereby appoints Joseph P. Tapali, Esquire, Tapali Valdez LLP, having an office at 3770 Lexington Avenue, Suite 1500, New York, New York, 10017 a special counsel to the town for the purpose of defending the matter entitled Dennis Sant, Kathleen Sant versus Town of Southeast. <coughs> Index number 500816 slash 2017, currently pending in the Supreme Court of the State of New York <coughs> and in the County of Putnam, and be further resolved that the special counsel shall be compensated at a rate of $185 per hour for attorney time and shall be reimbursed for all necessary disbursements made on behalf of the town. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment? Seeing none, town board comment. Looks like we exhausted oh. ourselves, huh? Wait, time out. I make, the, I make a motion to go back to the regular meeting for a second. Second. Waive the rules to um, set a date, a meeting date for Thursday, October 12th at 5 p.m. 1360 Route 22 for the purpose of the discussion of the budget. <coughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that was on the uh, allowment, or now on the motion itself. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Town board? Seeing um, none? Well, oh, yeah. Go ahead. You're I, right. I just, if nobody else has nope. anything to say, yeah. it's worked out, I guess. It depends there. after you say anything else. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, um, two things. I um, uh, just think we should close the meeting or with the moment of silence. Um, for John Leather, who was a longtime town employee, fire inspector, um, member of the Brewster Fire Department, and uh, county employee, I believe he was the fire coordinator for a while. Yes. Um, the resident of the town, uh, he just recently died. Uh, he was sick for a while. So, um, and also, uh, I think it would be appropriate to remember all the victims in Las Vegas uh, who were killed. Um, so <coughs> that's the only thing I'd like to say. Okay, so a moment of silence. I understand the mission. 
I'll make a motion we'll close tonight's meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming.